Hey guys, welcome to video number 56. Can you really quickly just like this video for me? And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I've been sitting at like 10,000 subscribers now for, I don't know, 13 years or something. Hey, a really quick story before we get into today's video. So this little Manaquari girl, she just recently gave me a small clutch of eggs, right? All right, well, so what does small mean? It's small. I mean, it was a small clutch of eggs. I don't think the numbers really matter that well, much. Well, no, it. I think people want to know. Are we talking like six? It was maybe less than six. I don't remember. Four? All right, it was two. I didn't know we were counting down, Casey Kasem. Yes, it was a small, it was two eggs, all right? I'm not real happy about that, but it was two eggs. <laughs> anyway, she gave me a small clutch of eggs. Two amazing eggs, by the way. Whenever females lay eggs, the first thing I always do is within 24 hours, because I want the females to start eating again, that's the biggest thing, right? We want to make sure the females lay all the eggs, they don't retain any eggs, that's really important. The second thing is that makes me feel great is when a female start, starts eating again. In this particular case, I soaked this girl the next morning a very, in very shallow water. I completely wiped out her entire enclosure. In fact, the perches were not even in her enclosure when she laid the eggs, okay? So the perches were not in her enclosure. The cage was wiped out, so there was no scent of eggs anywhere when I put her back into her enclosure. The cool thing about her is, yes, she ate within 48 hours. She took a meal for me, which is always a great relief. But here's the thing about this female that I've never seen this. This never, never happened to me before. She's still somehow picking up the scent of the eggs, because but even though she's eating, she's still always spread out on her perch, and she's you know doing the shivering things where she's raising her body temperature. So bottom line is, she still thinks she's incubating her eggs. And I'm not overly concerned because, like I said, she is eating. But what's really amazing and how nature works is, I guarantee you, on day 49, day 50, when those eggs hatch out in the incubator, I guarantee that's when she's going to stop shivering on the perch. It's just it's it's just instinct, and they just know to do that. I just thought that was really cool, and uh, I just think nature is absolutely incredible. Hey guys, just a couple of female bones, baby bones pythons from this season. Look how big they're getting. Are they incredible or what? These are both beautiful females and both already found new homes. So these are spoken for. Hey, um, before we get into today's video, I was at the Daytona show. Uh, the Daytona show, the first, last time I was in Daytona was probably about 12 years ago. It was absolutely amazing. I gotta tell you, I haven't been in so long. Tinley, to me, the October Tinley show, the NERBC show, to me, that's the one show. If you're gonna make one show a year, I always say make that Tinley October show. But Daytona was a pretty damn close second. Um, it wasn't as crowded as Tinley typically gets, but the diversity of animals, I thought, in the Daytona show compared to even Tinley, was, I gotta say, I think it was even better. There were a lot of ball pythons there as normal. They are the, whether you like it or not, ball pythons are the backbone of the hobby. And I love ball pythons, I really do. But amazing, uh, just diversity of animals. I mean, if you're into tortoises and turtles, by the way, I mean, I cannot even tell you. There must have been between baby turtles and tortoises, I don't know, 500, 1,000? It sounds like I'm exaggerating, I'm not. Anyway, if, uh, and if he came up to me in Daytona and I got a chance to say hi, that was awesome. That was so much fun walking around the show and so many people come up to me, coming up to me, so I really enjoyed that. So uh, overall, Daytona, uh, I just thought it was an amazing show. And if you didn't get a chance to go this year, I would definitely look into going next year. So what are we gonna get into today's video? Well, the first thing, well actually I shouldn't say the first thing. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a box of really beautiful baby chondros that once they're established, I'm going to be making them available to you guys. But um, we are gonna get into, oh, I got a box of baby carpet pythons into from Martin Roseman. Again, I know I keep throwing, like, exaggerating, but incredible babies. I'm so pumped to get them. And as soon as I saw the ad that, Mar that Martin had put up, I had to grab some of these. Um, but the really cool thing you guys are really going to appreciate, I have some footage today I'm going to show you guys. It's about 15 years old. We've always talked about the Chondro Coalition and Rico Walder. And I was able to get some uh, footage from 15 years ago at one of the reptile shows, just showing the Chondro Coalition booth with some of the guys who were there and just the amount of animals that were readily available back then. So I'm going to show you that clip. Those, it's, a couple, it's like a short clip of that I'm going to be able to show you. And, uh, but I think first we're going to get into a really cool uh, green tree, baby green tree python unboxing. <music> Who doesn't love a good unboxing? Those are always my most favorite parts, whether I'm watching reptile videos or uh, fish videos. I love a good unboxing. So what are we going to unbox today? We are going to unbox 
Tamika cross Aru baby green tree pythons. Um, what's cool about these is that um, some of the babies, I actually, I had full siblings I held back from last year. So you can get an idea of how I'll put the parents up. That's a Tamika cross Aru cross. I'm gonna have a, a pair of two yellow babies from those adults. And these two animals right here, these were both red neonates, um, but these are full siblings to uh, the two ba yellow babies I'm gonna show you. And they're, they're uh, the offspring of the adults that I just put the picture of. So we could take a look at those. And then what I'm gonna show you are um, all the babies. And I'm gonna break it down for you of what's what. So take a look at those first, how exceptional are those? Again, these are Tamika cross Aru. When I say Tamika, Tamika is uh, Morelia Polker. Actually, you know what, we're not 100% on that. There's, they fall into a gray area. So Tamika are actually either, they're somewhere between a Tamika, a, a Morelia Polker, and uh, t uh, Morelia uterensis. And then of course, Aru uh, chondros are Morelia viridis. So now that we showed you some yearlings that I held back, I'm gonna show you what I'm, exactly what I have available from Tamika Aru crosses. All right, so let's unbox some beautiful little baby chondros. First things first, who produced these? These are captive bred and born. These are from my friends, Kristen and Eric at Fascination Herp. I talk about Eric and Kristen quite a bit. They're just awesome people. Um, you know, I always say too, if you're looking for imports, we always tend to be afraid of imports, but if you're looking for rock solid, healthy imports that they've had in their custody or their possession, I should say, not their custody. It sounds like they're holding them prisoner, but um, they, they've had for quite some time and well-established. Uh, please reach out to uh, Kristen and Eric at Fascination Herp. I'll put their uh, contact information on the screen. They have cool stuff too, guys, like uh, albino green anacondas. They get other python species as well, but a lot of venomous snakes. That's what they're big into. They have probably one of the most elite venomous collections probably in the United States. And dare I say, I've never seen it myself, but from what I understand, they have literally one of the largest private collections of reptiles, possibly like in the world. I know that sounds like crazy, but it's, it's true. All right, so let's take a look at some babies. So first things first, I just show you those pair of yearlings that I held back, those red babies, and I put the picture of the adults. Both of these yellow babies, this is clutch one, so both of these, this one looks like it's in a shed. Those are two little yellow babies from that same pairing. Again, they're not gonna be as nice as those holdbacks I just showed you because those are red and these are yellow, but I promise you, uh, these are gonna be very reasonably priced and they're gonna be, they should be really exceptional, well above average animals as they get older. Let me open one of the containers here for you. So you can get a sense of that. Beautiful little yellow. We all love red babies, but I love yellow babies as well. I have a lot of Manaquari adults that I held back that were yellow neonates. Okay, so that's the one pairing I'll offer, I'll be able to offer babies from. And all these babies, guys, they need to be established, okay? They all have a few meals in them, but I'm gonna hold them back, get a lot more meals into them. And once I get them established, I'll be posting them up on Morph Market. So what are the remaining? One, two, three, four, five, uh, there's four. There's another seven in here, four red. I'm gonna take them out for you guys. There are four red and uh, there are two yellow from this clutch. So what is this clutch? Same exact Tamika male that was used in the previous clutch I just showed, just that male was used again with another Aru female, just a different Aru female. This Aru female actually, from pictures, it actually even looks prettier than the other Aru female that I sold babies from last year. And you guys who got those babies from me last year, those Tamika Aru animals, the reds and the yellows, you know exactly how pretty they turned out. So. They're not exact, they're not full related, these babies, to so that previous pairing. And again, I put the picture of the adults up, but these, I think, I don't want to oversell them, but I think these should be, based on what we've seen in the past with that same Tamika male, these should be pretty incredible animals. Let's take out one of the red babies here. Can you guys, that one's actually in a shed. You can get a sense of them. These are tiny, these are on little pinks right now. So I'm gonna get another minimally eight to 12 meals into them. My goal is by the time I'm selling them, they're gonna be on small fuzzy mice is what I'm hoping. How's that coming out, babe? A little blurry? How's that better? I don't know why. Sometimes, guys, the camera comes out easy. Sometimes it doesn't. I'll put a picture up of some of the babies, too, still photos so you guys can get a sense of them. So that's one of the red babies from this clutch. Here's another little red baby from this clutch. And they'll all be have identification numbers by the time I post them. Any luck? Coming in blurry? Ah, that's a bummer. All right, I'll put still pictures up of them as well. And uh, here are the two, here's one of the two yellow babies I'm gonna show you guys. Just pretty little yellow baby. Tamika Aru crosses, that one's coming out better. Okay, I'm not sure. Camera plays games sometimes. 
So again, all captive bred and born. I have hatch dates, everything you guys need, pictures of adults. I send a genotype certificate with every baby I sell. You guys who buy from me, you know exactly how, what to expect when you get animals from me. And yeah, again, once I get them established, I get a bunch of meals in them, they will be on Morph Market. And um, that's pretty much it. Hey, the next clip I'm going to show you guys is from that, uh, from that uh, show I was telling you about from, from the Chondro Coalition. First and foremost, uh, John Romano, he goes by Chondro, Chondro Mano. I'm going to put a, a link on the bottom of this video. All this credit goes to John. This is his footage. Uh, he has a YouTube channel that he uploaded these uh, videos about 15 years ago. There were quite a few of them. I picked what I thought were the two best that demonstrated what the uh, Chondro Coalition was about. But again, I want to make sure John gets full credit uh, John Romano. Um, so you can check out his channel when you get a chance. And like I said, he's got other videos there. But this is going to be really great for you guys. You're going to be able to see the, the amount of different animals that were available. Even though they call themselves the Chondro Coalition, they had some, there were a lot of, uh, Rico Walder always had uh, Northern Emeralds on his table as well, and he had Basin Emeralds. Um, you're going to see Rico Walder in this clip. Um, he's wearing like a green t-shirt, and he's wearing like khaki shorts. And you are going to see our own uh, Marshall Mendez, who's still very active in the community today, uh, producing some incredible animals. Marshall, he has the beard, he's got a blue shirt, I, I think in the, I think he's in both parts of these videos. Um, I always love bringing up Rico Walder, guys. The reason Rico is so important is because, you know, 15, 20 years ago in this hobby, a lot of the production was going on with breeding green tree, tree pythons was in, were in zoos, right? Babies were produced in zoos. And a lot of the zoo guys, they just didn't really translate what needed to be done as far as, I don't know, I always felt like I was a, a much younger man, and I guess I felt like some of the zoo guys, they just, they, they overcomplicated it. I don't know if that was intentional or not, maybe just because they're academics, and I felt like they were, uh, they made it a little more complicated, the whole breeding process. And that's why Rico was so important. Rico was an amazing liaison between guys who worked in a zoo and guys who worked in the private sector, hobbyists, guys like myself. And he just really broke things down and he simplified it for us. And that's why to this day, I will always give credit when any of you guys are producing green tree pythons out there, myself included, I always have to give Rico so many thanks for that. Because like I said, he was an amazing liaison. He never made you feel dopey, no matter what you asked him, he had time for everybody. And uh, he will always be, as far as I'm concerned, the goat of the green tree python community. Uh, and Greg Maxwell, of course, he wrote the book, he did an amazing thing too. But I think if I'm the top of Mount Rushmore to me would be Rico Walder. So anyway, I think you guys are going to really enjoy this clip. And just, you know, you'll see how many animals are talking about. These are all captive bred and born chondros, as you're going to see in the displays. And, you know, like there were a lot less people in the hobby too. So you would think like, oh my God, all those animals must have been sold by the end of the show. That wasn't really the case. I mean, these guys would definitely sell a lot of animals, but there was always, there were always animals available. They're always left over because this was pre-internet guys or just really the cusp of the internet. So there were not as many hobbyists. So it was supply and demand. There was actually more supply than demand back there. And as you know, it's very different now. But anyway, Check out this clip. I really think you're going to enjoy it and uh, be on the lookout again for Rico with the green t-shirt and the uh, tan shorts. This to be a female. And as you see, it didn't turn out that way. Look at the strike. Damn. That's the one that you got from. That's um, the one I wanted for Jim.
the last thing I need are more snakes, guys. But here's what happened. I was scrolling through Facebook one day, or was it Instagram, minding my own business when I uh, suddenly came upon this picture. That is a Jaguar sibling posted by a very evil man by the name of Martin Rosemond. Uh, if you don't know Martin, um, he and I have very similar interest in what we keep. And every time he posts animals for sale, I get that like feeling in my stomach like, oh my God, I'm about to spend money because I know whatever Martin has anything, it's, it's just amazing, especially in, in the carpet game. Uh, Jaguars and, and um, you know, Jaguar sibs, and he has pure diamonds right now, and he has amazing animals. And again, I saw the ad, I saw this picture, and I'm like, okay. He's got me. I got, I got to start sending Martin some money right away. And uh, so what's in this box? I bought from him 2.4 Jaguar siblings. So you guys know what Jaguars are, Jaguar carpets. A Jaguar is a co-dominant trait, right? You breed a regular Jaguar or a visual Jaguar to a normal carpet, regardless of the carpet you breed a Jaguar to. Uh, it's a co-dom. So 50% of the offspring are going to be Jaguars. The other 50% of the offspring, while they're theoretically really normal animals, we refer to them as jaguar siblings. Not sure how that all started, because they are jaguar siblings. Why we call them jaguar siblings, not normals, it's just is the way the market is. So I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to refer to these as jaguar siblings. And based on the offspring from previous years, like the animal I just showed you, that's a two-year-old jaguar sibling. Not from this exact pairing I got these babies from. Same uh, jungle female. Uh, the dam is a pure jungle female. Put her picture up. And the male is a beautiful, uh, just a gorgeous jaguar. Um, so that sibling I put the picture up is from the same dam, but a different sire. So let's take a look and see what these 2.4 baby jaguars, jaguar siblings are looking like. And I love that. And by the way, I did open the box like I always do, guys. I cheat just to make sure everything looks good and everybody's alive and healthy. And, uh, but I don't take anything out of the cups, I promise you. I do that with you guys. I wanted to make sure every, everything was just alive and healthy. I love the little note Martin put up here for me. Hi, Gary. And Martin, don't tell me for one second you did not copy that for me because we all know that I make those little notes for people. Sticker because we all love stickers. Nice and neat. And so what's the plan for these guys? I don't plan to have 2.4 Jaguar siblings and raise them to adults. I don't. But why do I buy so many? It's because what I like to do is I buy a bunch of babies from the same clutch. I raise them up to about a year old. They're all going to be gorgeous, but the exceptional ones, I'm going to hold back maybe 1.1, 1.2, and the rest I will make available. So what do we got? And you could already tell, even at this size, these were born, I think Martin told me in June, but it's hard to tell, but I'm going to show you guys something. Just They look like jungles right now. I'm going to hold that nice and steady. They almost look like, yeah, jungles, but... At this close, I don't know if you can see it yet, but you can already see the yellow peeking through. So let's see what else we got in here. That's one of the females. And Martin told me that I think on one or two of them, he put a star, meaning according to his eye, and Martin has a pretty damn good eye. He's been doing this long enough with these animals. Um, he put a star here, this one right here. He said he put a star on it. Just it, He thought it was just going to be an exceptional one. Just guys, take a look at that. And that is, that's a male, which is great. So there is no danger to breeding jaguar sibling to jaguar sibling. There's no issues whatsoever in doing that. Um, there is, however, an issue if you breed a jaguar to a jaguar. If you guys breed jaguar to jaguar, you get super jaguars, right? And oftentimes you get a lot of infertile eggs. You get deformed babies. You'll get, if you're lucky enough, you might get pure white carpet pythons, but they never seem to live more than a few days for anybody. Um, so breeding a jaguar to anything but a jaguar is totally fine. And breeding two jaguar siblings together is always fine. So you guys are going to get to raise these with me and my videos. I'll keep you guys updated with them. But this one is about, I don't know, this one just come in here one second. Honey. This is another male, the other male. I'm so happy. The two nice, really nice ones are to be males. But look at that one already. You guys see how light that is? Like that is, um, that's going to be exceptional, which is why I had to send Martin my money. Cause as soon as I saw the picture, I showed you guys the video at the beginning of this clip, that two year old, uh, sibling that's half related to these babies. Uh, I knew they're going to be something special. All right. 2.4 Jaguar siblings from Martin Morelia. I put his, uh, I'll put his information. He's Martin R Morelia on Instagram. And again, I'll put his info down below and I look forward to raising these babies. Hey guys, so that wraps up video number 56. I hope you really enjoyed that footage. I thought that was uh, something you guys would really definitely be interested in seeing. I'm sorry, my dog is barking upstairs. There's probably like, I don't know, a rabbit or a squirrel that's about to attack our house. So she's protecting us. Um, US Ark, they need our help now more than ever. They do so much for us and ask so little from us. So please always continue to support. 
uh, US ARC, and I look forward to seeing all you guys again in video number 57. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?